Hi there. My name is Kay Moon and I'm a twin flame channel and Western astrologer. And this is a video about the full moon in Capricorn taking place on July 3rd at 7.38 a.m. If you happen to be on the eastern seaboard of the United States, please check a time zone converter for your local time. This will be the twin flame energy update for the Divine Counterpart Collective. <clears throat> And a couple of quick announcements. Um, if you uh, want to see where the energy is going from here, because we do get into some Venus retrograde energies uh, very quickly after this full moon, so definitely have a listen to the Lightworker energy update. There'll, there'll be some great intel there. I'm going to cover a little bit here, but most of the intel will be over there. Um, and I'll do first look, my first impression of the next new moon, 14 days after this full moon there. I also have a conference coming up that I'll be hosting right here on this channel for you as part of the uh, celebration for reaching the 25,000 subscriber mark, which I'm really thrilled about. Thank you guys so much for being here. For everyone who has subscribed and stayed subscribed, whether you're new or or you're, uh, you've been with me from the beginning. You're one of my day ones. I love you all. And I'm going to host something called creator conference for you. Since the theme of this year has been heavily manifestation focused, we're going to get into hearing from some speakers and some guests about how to manifest new timelines, manifest love, manifest money. It's going to be a really exciting week. Um, the dates are going to be July 10th through July 16th. So coming up really quickly here, and I hope you'll join me for it. Mark your calendar. Definitely, if you're already subscribed, hit the notification bell so you know when I go live with the live interviews. I will also be publishing a schedule of creators that are joining us for this so that you can subscribe to their channels, get to know their content as well, because many of them are out freaking standing. I'm really excited about the lineup. It's a stellar group of people. Some of them you've heard me talk about. Some of them are going to be new. So I'm really looking forward to the conversation. All right, let's get into the full moon in Capricorn. Here is our full moon uh, right there at the 11th degree of Capricorn sitting next to Pholus and the earth and directly opposite Juno, the sun and Mercury. And this is a really interesting energy because <clears throat> this really speaks to uh, where the heart is and where the structure is being in two different locations. We also have a trine to Jupiter here in Taurus and a sextile to Saturn in Pisces uh, and a square to the shaman's asteroid down here in Libra with this full moon. And the conversation amplifies from here to be something about tension in partnerships that's indicating that some way, shape, or form, we may have outgrown partnerships as we know it or the structure of a current partnership. This The visual that I'm getting as I've looked at this is a, a plant that can't grow anymore in its current pot and needs to be repotted in a new pot if it wants to continue to grow. And so um, because Mercury is in the mix, there is some communication, but not a whole lot um, because there's not enough occupation of air sign energy in this chart from primary planets. There's far more uh, water, fire, and earth energy uh, which speaks to kind of um, emotions and actions, just kind of moving in that way without communication. There's just a bit more like, I feel it, I do it kind of energy going on here, which is really interesting. Um, but it's a movement toward greater alignment for each of these planetary energies, the divine feminine, the divine masculine, it's a movement toward greater alignment in the structure of uh, our partnerships and relationships. And the reason why this Capricorn full moon is so partnership focused is because 
Juno, the partnership planet, sits directly across from the moon. And so she's heavily featured in this energy. And so there's a restructuring going on here, a re kind of negotiation, maybe of contracts and agreements in the light worker energy update. I provided some collective examples that we're all kind of seeing globally around this. So you could understand how the energy is working on a meta scale, which will help you understand it on the micro as well. Um, What's also interesting about this is that let me come over here to where my like where, uh enter, my twin flame energy update notes are, um, is that the divine feminine energy in particular, her field looks like it's it's really through our divine feminine energetic fields that we're recognizing that there's an element of the current dynamic either in the connection or in connections. Generally speaking, she sits in the sign that governs family. So it could be blood family, soul family, a team that you work on. Um, there is an element of recognizing uh, where our receptive, our generative feminine energy has outgrown the present conditions. And there's the sense um, of our current emotional experience and reality, and then the structure of the relationship itself, as I mentioned, being at odds in some format or fashion or a mismatch. Okay. Um, there could be a bit of communication. Like I said, Mercury is sextiling Jupiter, which is actually a really good thing. Jupiter expands whatever he's touching. Mercury is communication, but Mercury is in water sign cancer planning and like decisions. And where do we go from here? Probably not a lot of what we're going to get. This is more like a voicing of here's what's not working. Here's my dissatisfaction level with it. Here's what's not a fit or here's what I've outgrown. It could be more like some of that type of communication than a like specific, let's make a plan. And so if the process to get to clarity with another person or group of people takes a little bit of time, just let it, um, there will come clarity and some planning and decision making as we get toward the new moon in cancer in the next lunation so like 14 to 15 days from now but right now what seems to be going on is just a sense of like where my heart is and where the structure is are two different things i want this but i need that they don't seem to bridge i've outgrown this but i'm stuck to it how do I get through it or how do I restructure it? You know, just there's some level of illumination around needing to reconfigure the way we're working in connection at this time. Okay. And for now, it could just be coming to conscious awareness. It doesn't even need to be maybe a conversation with anyone. It could just be like, a, hmm, that's interesting. I've outgrown such and such a thing. That's new. I haven't seen that from myself before. And the reason why this can be kind of a little bit like, I don't want to say puzzling, but more like uh, surprising is because of the way the Mercury communication is structured with Uranus. They're in a sextile. And so whenever Mercury and Uranus are in conversation, the aha can really hit like a lightning bolt. Like, aha, <laughs> I see what doesn't work for me. I got it now. I see what I've outgrown. Aha. There can be that level of like surprise to it where it just kind of hits you out of nowhere, even though it has probably been something that's been percolating for some time. And so again, there is some level of illumination on the macro that I provided in the Lightworker Energy Update if you want some examples of where that's playing out on the world stage. So it'll you can better understand how that might be playing out for you in the micro. Okay. <clears throat> um, now what's interesting about this, um, if we come back to the micro just a little bit between the counterparts, um, is that 
you know, because the counterparts are in a harmonious conversation with one another, which is always nice to see, they're in a sextile here. That's an indication of being on the same page or kind of working together in the same direction to some degree. Um, you know, if people are willing, sextiles provide benefit, but only when people are at the table working together. You know, there's nothing in a sextile that forces benefit upon us. We actually have to like pick it up with our own two hands in a sextile. The trines and the conjunctions just kind of bestow it. But the sextile says, nope, you got to do it yourself. If you want the benefit, you got to put in the work. And so there is that energy of benefit of providing, you know, both people are in communication, are working together, are trying, you know, to be on the same page in some format. Um, you know, providing some understanding to one another's position that would certainly be Juno in Cancer, facilitating some self love that would be the Jupiter and Taurus feature of this. You know, both people bringing those elements to the table and creating space for the other to be in that energy. There's there can be real opening here, um, and real opportunity to come to uh, the same page or arrive in the same place. Nevertheless, um, there could be an energy here and that is create that, that, how can I put this? Come on, mouth, keep up with the mind, <laughs> mind, slow down for the mouth. There could be an energy here where presuming the two of you are already in some, some format of union or identifying yourselves, it's in connection, um, there could be a, a, that's something that's not happening between you, but something that's happening outside of you where the connection is interfacing with others or the expectations that others have of you two that doesn't match who you two are or how you two want to be together. And that may mean that perhaps you're putting up some boundaries uh, with the way the divine feminine energy is speaking to Saturn. They both speak to this kind of putting a ring around something to protect its sovereignty, putting a ring around a marriage or a partnership, setting up commitment, setting up boundaries. This is what we're going to do. This is what we're not going to do, that kind of thing, because those two are in trine and they speak to their commitment focused energy when they come in communication in this way. So it could be some of that where, you know, the two of you in connection are creating and establishing boundaries with other people. Like, eh, you can't talk to us like that or eh, you, know, you can't do like that. You know, that's disrespectful to us as a partnership or we find that disrespectful, right? This is how we want to be treated. This is how we want to be respected, that kind of thing. And again, because she's sitting in a sign that deals with families, deals with mothers, there could be some level of like deeper conversation with female authority figures in the life of the counterparts where and how this is getting worked out. So it's like, okay, no, mom, I get it. You want to help. That's actually not helpful. <laughs> what you want to do is help. This is what you need to do. This is what we need. You know, reshaping some of those dynamics to create safety and protection or establishment and support for the connection between the counterparts. There could be some of that going on. Um, and for those who are connecting anew, um, you know, and maybe you aren't at that particular place yet, there could be some level of moving into just a deeper element of union energy that speaks to either deeper understanding of one another or what this is with Juno and Cancer, um, or an awareness of how spiritually bonded and emotionally invested the two of you are and whatever this is or whatever it's going to be with the way Juno is speaking to Saturn. And it speaks to taking a step forward in some way in the third dimension for those who are, you know, in a place to do that or ready to do that. It speaks to some level of like deeper surrender, deeper, not even surrender. That's not the right word. The right word is establishment, deeper establishment of you know, okay, this is real. And we are like for real doing this. This is we're for real on the same page at this point, which is nice to see, but there's definitely an outgrowing 
no matter which way you slice it, we're together, we're coming together, we're not together at all. There is some level of outgrowing one level and growing into the next level, whether you're doing that individually or together and then needing to change the structure of things either between yourselves as it pertains to the way you two deal with one another or change the structure around yourselves as it pertains to the way other people deal with you too. There is some level of outgrowth here, like, okay, time to up level, which is always great to see. I'm a fan of up levels all the way around. Um, And so ultimately it's about creating better alignment with where the emotional truth is between the two of you or for you as an individual in the connection. You know, for some, there could be a little facing of some hard truth and just allowing yourself to settle into that. Like, okay, this is, this is not the place I thought I would be at this point. I thought it would work out this way. I thought it might work out that way. But this is what it is. And in accepting that, accepting my own emotions in response to that, giving yourself permission to not just embrace that emotional truth, but also be in a place of creating a reality that honors that. Like, okay, well, this is where it's at and this is what I need. This is how I'm going to restructure things for myself to just honor that this is where it's at for right now. And that's okay. Again, a a changing of scene and circumstance, a changing of structure as it pertains to connection that creates greater emotional integrity, wholeness, alignment. Okay. I really love this energy because it speaks heavily to evolution and connection with the way Juno is speaking to the creation goddess down here. I like that a lot. And she's also speaking to Makemake, the shaman's asteroid here in a square formation. And so this really speaks to like through our divine energetic fields, there is a releasing of something that was the established old of our patterns. And I'm going to speak to this more in depth in a minute when we get into the Venus retrograde for twins, because I have a special update about that speaks to like the releasing or the flushing out of not flushing, but flushing like down the toilet or down the drain of an old pattern that we've had in the connection that it's time to let go of an old way of showing up an old way of behaving an old way of understanding things an old way of communicating and connecting There is something opening here that is fostering the divine feminine energetic fields release of stuff that is old, old creations. Here's creation goddess retrograde conjunct the south node. Anytime we've got planetary energy retrograde in communication with the nodes, we get the nodes beginning to perform like portals that open up and either let out or let in an energy. And so with creation goddess retrograde conjunct south node, south node is what we're letting go of. We are having the old creations in that are Libran or relationship in nature or old balances of power that maybe we've outgrown now going bye-bye down the toilet gotta go get out of here i've grown into something new i am new i'm a different thing i'm a and so therefore this whole thing has to be different too and with that because of the way the shaman's asteroid is speaking to her from the sign of partnership there's a lot of growth to be recognized here at this moment in time There is a lot of like, wow, yeah, this has been a journey. I have learned a lot. I'm not the same person as when I started this journey. I'm bringing new information to the table for myself. There's a lot of opportunity to forgive ourselves here. This is what I didn't know before. And so now I can let that go because you know what? I'll never not know again. I can trust myself in this new arena, in this new established thing that I'm moving in, in relationship, it's safe for me to love again. And so, you know, with this kind of rebirth cycle that 
really colors the whole summer because of the way Pluto is retrograde square, the transiting nodal axis here. I go in depth about that in the Lightworker Energy Update. There's an opportunity to rebirth ourselves through our divine feminine energetic fields. It's a new beginning energy. There's the integration of what we've learned and then the rebirth of something new. We definitely went through the Plutonian death period last year in 2022. We're done with that. This first half of the year may have been a lot of integration for some of you, and now we're moving into the season of rebirth that's going to come through us making decision by decision in alignment with our emotional truth, okay? So that's exciting. There could just be like a little bit of leftover release and flushing out with the creation goddess retrograde conjunct the south node while Juno passes over uh, a trine configuration with those. And she's pretty much already passed it. You know, there could have been like a purging that was maybe two, three weeks long as Juno came out of Gemini and headed into the first degrees of cancer. Now we're coming out of that and into a bit more of the rebirth energy, okay? And so I like to see this, you know, I like to see people transcending old patterns, transmuting them, becoming new in relationship and partnership. Many of you all, you know, you've studied, you know what you need to do, where you need to be, who you need, how you need to behave in order to create newness and partnership, how to grab hold of your new um, but for those of you who are like, ah, K-Moon, I'm just confused. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I just, I need something new, but I don't know how to get it or like where to go or like what to study. Like, I feel like I just keep spinning around, repeating stuff. This is a season of major timeline jumps. So if you need some help figuring out how to stop repeating some patterns in relationship, definitely get a personal reading. July is a great time to do that because we do have some energies in this full moon in Capricorn and the new moon in Cancer. It's two weeks from now that are opening us up to accessing our personal power in ways we've never had the ability to do it before. And thus anchoring ourselves onto a completely new timeline. So I want to make sure if you're stuck, you know that I can help you with that. If we have a look at your chart, you can book with me over at kmoonastro.com for that. Link is below this video. Now, for those who are on some identifying your connection in some format of a union track, like I said, you're going to see deep in connection. You're going to see some of you are going to go from connection to commitment. Some of you all are going to go from commitment to marriage somewhere in here, you know, because, you know, this Juno thing is in the sign that deals with homes. The moon governs homes as well. And here we have structure Capricorn where the moon is for some of y'all. This is like legitimately moving in together building home together, figuring out like, whoa, we have all this stuff. How do we put the stuff in the same place? Like we've outgrown one, got to grow into another. It's like very home related in that way. How do we blend a family, et cetera? And for those of you who identify on some sort of separation path at this moment in time, this could be putting in some new boundaries between you and your person or them erecting some new boundaries between you both and thus creating a new pathway forward um, with new dynamics between the two of y'all or a new structure that makes space for which, where each of you are at emotionally if that just doesn't happen to be on the same page. So Something old being released in structure and something new being brought in, which speaks to the season of in-between uh, that I spoke about at length in the Lightworker Energy Update that moves to the end of the mid-2020. So we're talking about like through 2028. There's a lot of liminal space through the middle of the 2020s. And I go into which planets are involved in that video. So definitely have a look for that because it's not twin flame specific. It's for the collective. 
Um, but yeah, there's a lot of liminal space here where, you know, we're kind of all being moved across the chessboard of life. Um, and things may not be as clear now as they are going to be if we give this, you know, the benefit of time and letting it play out. Okay. And this liminal space really opens up between from June through about September, October of this year with the way, uh, Pluto is square, the transiting nodal axis in a convert retrograde square, the transiting nodal axis with a conversation about personal power and the way we're using our power to transform the structures of our life. So it, like I said, not going to revisit that here, but this is the beginning, uh, this Pluto retrograde square to the transiting nodal axis around how are we using power to open the pathway to structures in our connections and our lives that actually represent our newness or where we're going or what we're becoming. What are we closing the door to with our power? What are we saying yes to with our power? And how are we doing that in ways that really honor the truth of who we are and who we've become? Okay. Now the Jupiter placement, the divine masculine energetic placement here at the ninth degree of Taurus um, is still close enough to the North node to be indicative of an open pathway to a new timeline in the divine masculine energetic field. So here's North node, here's Jupiter. They're not as close as they were earlier this year when they were much closer. It was like, woo, rapid manifestation, things, you know, coming into fruition fast, new timelines opening up. There's still a bit of a new timeline here, but like the, the window is closing on some of that. And what we're doing now is solidifying the intentions we set, the manifestations we created, the timelines we were open. We're moving into a season of solidifying those things with actions and choices. Okay. Now, there is a, in the divine masculine energy fields, this open timeline is one that speaks to self love because Jupiter sits in the sign of Horus, the sign of self-love and organizing a life that values who we really are. Okay. Cause Taurus is the sign of self-value as well. Now for some, the Venus retrograde is already having the impact of a huge financial rectification in the divine masculine energetic fields. And the reason why this is, is because Venus here deals with love, but she sits right now in a sign that deals with uh, self-sovereignty, creative authority, um, being our authentic selves, and that's Leo. And so with Venus in Leo, that's like, and she's speaking to like Jupiter in Taurus. This is like self-love on steroid or steroids and not in a selfish way, just in a like, I see you're thirsty child drink kind of way. <laughs> like there's a benevolence from the universe here saying where you have left yourself out, where you've counted yourself out, where you have, you know, not allowed yourself a seat at the table, where you have centralized others instead of creating yourself as center and building life from there. This is the moment in time where through the divine masculine energetic fields, we come out of a season of self-sacrifice and martyrdom, and we step into a season of filling our own cup. That's a really beautiful thing to see here in the divine masculine energetic fields is a recognition of like, whoop, yep, I'm going to have to get real unattached to your thoughts and opinions of me while I do me for a little while. And so where you're seeing that unfolding connection, it's going to be important to not take that personally because it's just, it's not about you. Um, it's just, it's a, it's a format and feature of, again, outgrowing the old cycle and stepping into a new one with more of our true self online. And there's no real way to connect with another until we fully and truly connected with ourselves. I find, I found myself saying this a lot back when I was offering twin flame readings. Um, you know, 
people will be like, I just don't understand why she treats me like this or why she would talk to me like that or why he would, you know, I would never do X, Y, Z to him. I can't believe he did X, Y, A, B, and C to me. And I would have to explain to people, like, you got to understand that people can't treat you any better than they're treating themselves. If they are ignoring themselves, chances are they're also, they have a mechanism built within them to ignore you. If people are like disconnected from themselves, it's easy to disconnect from you. If people have a self-abusive mechanism within themselves that mechanism is going to also be directed toward you. They cannot treat you better than they're treating yourself. It's just, it's not, we don't have it like that when we're trapped in human bodies. And so it's really important. Compassion, compassion, compassion. Um, and just really understand like what your own boundaries are in this. Like, ooh, okay, that's the way you treat yourself. I'm going to have to go stand over here. I can't stand next to you while you do that to you because that means you're also doing that to me, right? So if you need some boundaries, like Saturn's here helping the process along. Saturn's speaking to the divine masculine energy quite nicely, divine feminine energy quite nicely at this time. Boundaries are a great thing to either um, articulate or enforce or both as, as the case may require. So, um, but there's a lot of, like I said, you know, drink, drink, child, drink. I see you're thirsty. There's a lot of replenishment that we're invited into in this energy to really fill our own cup as we're moving through this up level and step into, okay, this is the, this is my new pot. This is what I'm going to be doing. And to feel it out, take your time getting into that. There's no rush, right? All right. Now, what's interesting about this, and this is where we start to brush up against some of the Venus retrograde energy because Venus is not presently speaking to the divine masculine energetic field, but as Venus retrograde unfolds, Venus will. So I want to give you guys the dates for that because this is going to impact our divine masculine energetic fields significantly. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where did I stick those dates? There they are. Okay. So uh, June 19th already happened. Venus entered uh, the pathway for retrograde when she hit the 12th degree of Leo. And so she's moving in this direction and she's going to keep going until July 22nd when she hits the 28th degree of Leo. And then we're going to see her move in apparent backward motion. This is when the technical retrograde begins. She's going to move in apparent backward motion in the sky from July 22nd to September 3rd. And she's going to go back to that 12th degree of Leo. After uh, September 3rd, she's going to move forward again uh, to the 28th degree of Leo. She'll still be in what we call the retrograde zone. So this area that I'm highlighting here, she'll still be in that zone dealing with the same themes until October 28th. And at October 28th, that's when she will, sorry, October 7th. That's when she'll pass the 28th degree of Leo and move on and be completely done with the retrograde. So June 19th through October 7th is when we're dealing with our Venus retrograde themes. Now, normally I would just, you know, throw, I, and I did, I did an extensive piece inside the Lightworker Energy Update about this and kind of what to expect. Howsoever. Um, because Juno is going to speak to the divine masculine energy in a very specific way, I kind of wanted to lay that out for you so you guys could see that. Um, going back to, let's see, stations, retrograde stations, right? Let's go to, uh, September 12th. So nine, 12. Okay. So between... July 22nd, sorry, uh, September 3rd, September 3rd, there we go, uh, 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 
That's 2015. Let's try that again. Let's go up to 2023. There, 2023. There we go. All right. So now you guys can see Jupiter will pop out to the 15th degree right now. Divine masculine energy is at the ninth degree of Taurus. So it doesn't move very fast. We've got Jupiter then in a nice 90 degree angle conversation with Juno, the furthest back she's going to go, which is that 12th degree of Leo. Now at that point, she's going to be sitting super close to Juno, the divine feminine energy imbuing divine feminine energetic fields with a lot of magnetism and receptivity. The challenge here is that when you have the counterparts in square, it's difficult for them sometimes to be on the same page, but there's opportunity here for both of them to grow through it, to grow, to get on the same page. There's an opportunity for both of them to be in a place where they are like, okay, so what's going on? How do we do this? What do we, how do we work this stuff? Um, and there's real opportunity here as well for something new to get birthed in this that didn't exist previously. So where there may have been like a lot of manifestation, a lot of union energy, a lot of coming together, all through the first six to eight months of the year, we get to this ninth month, when we get to the end of the eighth month, there seems to be some growing tension in the divine counterpart energetic fields. And that tension, it and that's specifically the way this moon is, the full moon in Capricorn. It's like, oh, the tension could be between you or outside of you. This is definitively tension between y'all. And so the opportunity here is to look and see and understand one another's perspectives from a different vantage point than you may have previously and understand that neither one of you really holds the, you don't have the monopoly on the right way to do things. Neither one of you really has, you know, kind of the, like the officialness of like, I am right. And everything you say is wrong. Right. I mean, obviously you guys get that, but when you're in the thick of it, trying to work stuff out with someone, it can be kind of hard to remember that. Now this mercury retrograde that will be going on at this time in September will actually be very constructive. Because this will be an opportunity the way Mercury is speaking to Jupiter, this will be an opportunity for both people to revisit things they may have said, find to some details, have some conversations like, okay, did you really mean this when, because this is how I took it. It'll be an opportunity to rehash some stuff, which will be fantastic the thing is, is it just a little bit of a tricky time only because at the start of this Mercury retrograde or at the tail end of it, Mercury will be in conversation with Neptune and that might not have communication be the clearest. So it may take several conversations as you know, we close summer, some things will come up over the course of summer in the Northern hemisphere, winter in the Southern hemisphere, expect some stuff to come up that are going to challenge you and your connection to grow. And then as we close the season in September, moving into October, expect that there will be opportunities to talk through stuff, but it might take several conversations before you get to the same page. So don't give up. Other interesting thing about this too, is I like to see, you know, Juno and Venus again in Leo. There's a lot of self-love and self-respect here. Same thing with Jupiter and Taurus. There's a lot of self-love and self-respect here. Just important to remember as tensions rise over the summer, that this isn't about finding yourself at odds. Um, this is about finding yourself growing together and figuring out what can we do? How can we talk through things? Like how, you know, where is it that, you know, I can learn from you? Where is it you can learn from me? That kind of thing now. Okay. So that's my little Venus retrograde spiel. Um, let me see what else did I have in these notes about it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, 
specifically and exclusively in our divine masculine energetic fields, some of you are going to be, as we're working through this, dealing with some money stuff, like some straight up financial, like, okay, what's, what do we got to do here? And so because Venus deals with money, um, for some of you, there's like some financial rectification going on. So you're going to be asking for a raise, communicating about contracts with Jupiter trying the full moon in Capricorn at this period of time. Um, let's go back to the now time. And these kind of things will get worked out over the course of June, July, August, and September. We've got Jupiter here speaking to this full moon in Capricorn. So like I said, it's it looks like asking for a raise. It looks like restructuring contracts. It looks like making new financial and business decisions. It looks like form reformatting and solidifying new business alliances and our divine masculine energetic fields. This can be male or female, as you all know, you know energy is neutral. We all have a masculine part of ourselves and a feminine part of ourselves, regardless of what our body has going on. We all carry both energies. And so you may really see your divine masculine energy internally speaking up for yourself financially and making some new decisions financially in the third dimension. Taurus is earth, moon and Capricorn is earth. There's some decision-making going on to meet your own needs in the third dimension, truly. Um, and that's, I like that. I like to see that a lot where, you know, we're taking the time to look after ourselves and care for ourselves financially. Now, this Venus retrograde in particular is going to be interesting for the counterparts because Venus will roll over the position the counterparts last came together at in 2015. So um, I want to say a real quick shout out to the subscriber who mentioned this and brought it to my attention back in like December or January. She put it in a comment. Thank you for doing that. Because I was like, oh, that is fascinating. So I'm going to show you guys what that looked like. So if we go back to May 20th of 2015, this was the last time. The counterparts came together in union in the sky. They only do it like once every seven years, constituting like this two-year kind of union window. And that was here, um, May of 2015. And there they are at the 15th degree of Leo. And in this coming together, they opened up a season of self-sovereignty. They opened up a season of creative authority. Um, they opened up a season of kind of creativity and, you know, honoring our inner child or working with children in some capacity when they came together in Leo. Okay. During this season, they were in trine to Uranus, and this was pretty much the main aspect they made at this time. Uranus was in Aries, and so with the two of them together like this, this opened up a fire um, union window, really, in some ways. And we're in another fire union window now. The next one won't be fire. It'll be water. They'll come together in Cancer in some years from now, but... This Uranus energy imbuing the two of them would have felt like the energy of connections coming together during the season, like hit like shockwaves. It was like between, you know, you met your counterpart from 2015, May 2015, all the way through 2022, the end of 2022. If this is the season in which y'all met, this energy was like catalytic in its way that it was transformative for both parties. And the connection itself became transformative for people around you as you evolved. So you two came together during this season. There was catalytic energy between the two, two of you exchanging lots of light codes, lots of energy, lots of information from the divine then that then became those light packets then got diffused to the collective as new information on how to love, how to live, how to work, how to connect. All right. 
Now, um, let's come back to, let's see where the counterparts came together. So remember that 15th degree of Leo, because our Venus retrograde from this year is going to roll over that exact point. Let's go back to 2023. Um, I believe it's going to be in July. <clears throat> Late July, let's see, might be August. There we go. Yeah, so right around 15th degree, right around August 20th is when we're going to see Venus hit that same spot. And so that is going to be... I think fascinating personally. I love this kind of synchronicity, but it speaks to because what was also happening that same year at a roughly the same time, because Venus does not retrograde every year back in 2015 at the exact same time, we also had Venus retrograde over those same spots, the same degrees of Leo. It's very similar degrees of Leo. So this is like, uh, like really, is this really happening? It's the sinks are uncanny and it speaks to a retrieval and a closure of some format at this time. The way I'm reading it is the final closing of the last cycle between counterparts and the full on opening of a new chapter and a new cycle, which really opened, you know, some point last year, but high peak energy was January of this year, as the counterparts came together in early degrees of Aries. Okay. The last cycle featured the North Node in Libra, but this cycle is going to feature the has already featured when they came together back in January, the North Node in Taurus, the sign of self-love, um, self-worth, self-esteem, and self-value just taking you back to January so you can see it. There are our counterparts sitting together in Aries, North Node and Taurus, but North Node is heading to Aries, um, the sign of just being our unique and individual selves, being authentic, being who we really are, but together, no compromise, no negotiation. So like I said, to me, this really speaks of a retrieval um, uh, did I say retrieval? Yeah. Retrieval of, you know, a union energy from that period of time and simultaneously the closing of the last cycle and the opening of a new, the full on official opening of a new one, no more overlap. It's officially done, but I am really curious if you have other interpretations of the energy as well, as you look at this and you look at the dates, I know many of you are also astrologers or interested or just invested in astrology on this channel. Um, as you look at the energy, how do you interpret what, you know, Venus retrograde over the same degrees at the same time mean? You can put that in the comments below um, at both times, both years, because that's unusual. Um, and yeah, and I'd like to hear your thoughts. It may help somebody else as well understand their journey. Leave those in the comments. Or if you're not a student of astrology in that way, just kind of like, look, okay, well, I don't even know what that stuff means. What are you talking about? You can just share what you can, uh, what you are choosing to leave behind from the last cycle in connection, and you can set your intention in the comments there for what you'd like to call in with the new energy. And then you can rewatch this later on, watch this video down the road and see how it all is unfolding, kind of like a wishing well or a dream journal. One last thing. I'll leave you with, um, I talked a lot about confronting our fears as an exercise to access our power, power to change, power to create, power to grow, power to designate a timeline and jump on it. I talked a lot about that in the Lightworker Energy Update. And 
I utilized in that energy update um, some symbology, some imagery from the tarot to really bring drive the point home. Because the imagery I really feel like is great allegory for what we're living through at this moment, that it we're going to have to confront some things that really make us uncomfortable in order to be able to pick up our power and use it during this season. But on the other side of that, there's complete liberation. There's freedom. There's love. There's all kinds of truth and light on the other side of that. And I used the devil card and the lover's card, which are mirror images of each other in many ways from the tarot to illustrate that point. Um, but in closing for you guys, I want to say, cause it, it, it often gets overlooked here. Um, they're both six cards, right? The, I think the devil card is the 15 card. So one plus five is six. And this is the six card itself. This is a five. It's a one in Roman numerals. So it's six. So there's a lot of mirroring going on here. But for those of you who are like in the new cycle, it's just, I really want to manifest love and union and connection. The illustrator of the deck the the original writer way made some made a very interesting decision in the way he drew the card and you can see um in you know decks that either closely resemble the original or the original deck you can see in the allegorical imagery look let me tell you something you see this his eyeballs right here divine masculine eyeballs all on her. You see this right here? Divine feminine eyeballs, all on the divine. There's some, you know, as my coach, Yielded Vessel would put it, there's some strategy in this. You know, if what you're trying to call in and cultivate is a union of some format in the third dimension through your divine feminine energetic fields, you're going to have to really cultivate a union with God, with divine, with source, with love, with light, whatever way you want to call that energy. And the choice point is this summer as the old timeline really begins to fall away and the new timeline opens up right? Because I talk about this summer in the Lightworker Energy Update being a season of significant choices. And so, you know, where there has been an over-focus on conversations of separation or pain and heartbreak or suffering and sadness and connection, for those of you who are like, I just want love, there's an invitation to step into just starting to focus more directly on creating that union with source, creating that union with love and union with light and releasing all focus over here and get focused up here to elevate yourself. In so doing that creates the magnetism that pulls love in your direction in whatever format love wants to manifest. All right. So I thought I would leave you guys with that. It's something I've been sitting with since the beginning of the Taurus Scorpio eclipse cycle that, you know, this, <laughs> if we want to have a conversation about love and union, we actually need to pick up love and union as the, if we want to live in love and union, we have to pick up the conversation and put our focus and attention there right? Um, so that's what I got for y'all. Um, I love you. It's going to be a great full moon. If you need some help navigating the energies, you can find me over at kmoonastro.com. Be on the lookout for, uh, for creator conference, July 10th through the 16th. Here on this channel, it will be free. The videos will live here. Um, you don't need to do anything other than just subscribe. You'll see it come through your feed. And definitely hit the notification bell. If you'd like to be notified when I go live, some of the presenters will be answering live questions. And it would be great to be able to give you some answers in real time for some of the stuff you guys are working on manifesting. Okay. All right. We will talk to each other at the next Flunation. And until then, you guys stay safe, stay well, and know that you're loved. Bye for now.